Hello everyone, this is Manny here. Welcome to the first lesson in this series. We're going to be discussing the concept of limits today. We will learn to calculate them, but only in a manner that will illustrate what taking a limit is all about. And these are the table and graphing methods that we'll learn today. Let's start off with the basic definition of a limit. First of all, note that this is a basic definition and is by no means a formal mathematical definition. Nevertheless, it still serves to give us an idea about what a limit is. The notation used for taking the limit of a function is here. If you were to put it in words, you would say that the limit of f of x as x approaches c is l. What it means is that as x gets closer and closer to the value of c uh, on both sides, by which I mean the left and right sides, f of x approaches the value l. Just keep in mind that x is getting closer to the value of c, but it doesn't mean that it actually reaches the value of c. The limit is concerned with only the behavior of the function around the value of x equals c, and not in what happens at x equals c. We'll illustrate this in the next slide. Okay, here is an example. Just to serve as an illustration. Okay, this function will label f of x. Okay, and we'll label this point y zero. Okay, so here we're going to show you the limit as x approaches c of f of x. Okay, so basically what we were saying earlier is that as x approaches c, and here x is approaching c, but from the right and left sides, then the function approaches this value. So let's let's talk about the left side. As x approaches c from the left side, the function increases and approaches that value, the circle value, which is L. As x approaches c from the right side, the graph comes in in this direction and approaches that same value, uh, which is y equals L. And therefore we say that the limit as x approaches c of f of x is l. So if both sides agree as to what value they're approaching, then that's the value that the limit, um, that's the value for the limit. Note that this value does not have to exist. So for example, uh, this point here at c L, that's uh, this is not even in the in the range of f of x. So L does not exist. The point C comma L doesn't exist on the point on the graph of f of x. The only point that exists on f of x is is um, the point C comma y zero. Um, and notice that this wasn't the same value as the limit because remember the limit is only concerned with what's happening around in a neighborhood if you will around uh, the value x equals c so whatever is happening in this area that is what you're concerned with in this case the point doesn't exist there are cases where the point uh, exists and it's the same exact value as the limit, as we'll see when we work a couple examples.
Okay, our first example. Determine the value of the limits by using the following graph. So in this graph here, this is x equals negative 3, right here. Okay, so we have this point here that we're looking at. Okay, so we're, we want to evaluate the limit as x approaches negative 3. And remember, we're going to approach it from both sides. So as we approach from the left side, notice that the function or the y um, is increasing. And it's approaching this value here. As we do it from the right side, the function is actually decreasing. Right? You can see that it's decreasing if we're coming from the right side onwards. And it's also approaching the same exact value, right? Therefore, we can uh, say that the limit as x approaches negative 3 is negative 5. The value y equals negative 5, right? And so we say that that's equal to negative 5. Okay, so for the other example, we want to evaluate the limit as x approaches 2, and that's this value here. So notice that as we approach the value x equals 2 from both sides, so as we approach it from the left side, the, the function is increasing, and as we approach it from the right side onwards, the y value is decreasing, or the function value is decreasing and is approaching this this point, if you will, this voided point. And therefore we can say that the limit um, as x approaches 2 is 0, because this is the value of y equals 0. Now notice that the point didn't exist, right? Because this is a voided point. Uh, and in, in fact, in this case, the, the point doesn't exist at all on the graph. So, so um, for the domain, do, the domain does not include x equals 2. It doesn't matter if the domain doesn't include that x value. Remember, because the limit is not concerned with what's happening at that value itself. It's just, it's just looking at the behavior of the function and what it's trying to approach. Okay, for the next example, determine the value of the following limit by using a table of values. Okay, so the last example dealt with using uh, graphical methods. So this one, we're going to use a table. And we're going to call this function f of x. And now I'm going to make four columns instead of the traditional uh, two columns. And this is, and the reason why is because I like to divide it by the side that I'm coming from. So in this case, I'm coming from the left side, and this, and this other side, I'm coming from the right side. So if you're approaching from the left side, remember that means that the x values are smaller than the, the value of interest, right? Here you're trying to approach 4. And we want to approach it from the left side, which means we need values that are smaller. So like 3 and 3.5, and we got to show the progression towards that value 4. But remember, we cannot include the actual value x equals 4. It's just, it only has to be values that approach it. So in this case, I'm going to choose x equals 3. I'm going to do 3.5. Yeah, let's do 3.99. Okay, so we're only going to just evaluate the function 
add those values. So you can say, you know, f of 3 equals 9 minus 6 in this case, because 2 times 3. And then you have 3 minus 4. Okay, so you have 3 minus 8, which is negative 5, divided by negative 1 is going to be 5. Okay. Now, if you were to uh, evaluate this for um, all the values you're going to get, you, and this is just doing it on the calculator. 5.5, 5.9, Now for this x value, uh, remember we're approaching from the right side, so we need to have values that are bigger, right? And approaching for. Uh, so we're going to start with 5, then 4.5, Four point one and four point zero one. Okay. So if you evaluate at five, you're going to get a value of seven. Here you're going to get six point five, six point one and 6.01 and this is all done with the calculator just for convenience now note um, that both sides seem to be approaching a single value and you can guess that that value is about six remember if you see if you see a pattern of what it's approaching and both values agree uh, this means that that's the limit. So in this case, since both values agree at the value x equals 6, this means that the limit is equal to 6. And that's all there is for the table format. It's pretty easy. It's just a basic table of values. Instead, you have um, left side and right side. Okay, determine the following values using the given graph. So here we're going to do a graphical format just for convenience. Um, so let's evaluate f of 4. What is that? Well, remember, uh, f of 4 is not this point because this is a void point and it's not in the uh, range of the function. However, this point is filled and it's going to be included as part of the graph. And let's just say that this is 2 and this is 4. OK, so f at 4 is going to be this point here. And, and therefore, f at 4 is 4. Uh, x equals 4, the y value is 4. And that's done. Now if you're doing the limit as x approaches negative 4, uh, that should say 4. So that should be a positive 4. Apologize for that. Okay, so the limit as x approaches positive 4, you want let's we need to do it from both sides. So as it approach as x approaches 4 from the left side, notice that the graph is behaving in this in this manner. It's approaching this value. It's approaching the value y equals 2. Okay, so from the left side we have 2. Now from the right side, as x approaches 4 from the right side, how does the function behave? Well, it behaves in this manner. And it stays constant, but it approaches this point here. So it approaches y equals 4. So remember, we said that if the values agree, then the limit exists, and the value of the limit is given by the value that they agree upon. In this case, 
if you evaluate from both sides, the value of the limits um, are uh, varies. So if they vary, then you say that there is no limit, or the limit does not exist. So we're going to say does not exist. Okay, so this is the last example uh, for this presentation. Determine the value of the following limit. The limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x squared. Um, now we can do this um, either of the two ways that we've learned so far. We could graph the function uh, and we can do and or we could you know do the table method. Let's, uh, if you were to do the table method, uh, I'll show you how to set it up, but we're gonna do the graphing method in this example. If you were to set if you were to set up the table, something like this. Okay, so you have x, 1 over x squared, or you can label that f of x if you want, uh, x, and 1 over x squared. Okay, so if this is the left side, right side, so since you're approaching 0 from the left side, uh, this means that we're going to be using negative numbers, to any uh, numbers that are there to the left of 0 on the number line. So negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.1, negative 0 0.01, negative 0 0.001, and so on. And from the right side, you would set it up in a similar fashion, just positive numbers instead. And that's how you would set it up. And then you can evaluate the function y over x, or 1 over x squared, at these various x values. Uh, if you do so, you're going to find that uh, the value of this function is going to continually increase. It's going to get bigger and bigger. And we'll show this on the graph. And it's not going to really approach any number per se. It's just going to keep increasing. And that's because of the graph. So we're going to show you the graph here. Remember that 1 over x squared um, for, for the graph of 1 over x squared, recall that the domain does not include 0 because we can't divide by 0. So therefore we have the vertical asymptote at x equals 0, which is the y-axis in this case. And if you were to graph this, say, on a graphing calculator or by using your table of values, you can also graph it. You'll have a graph that looks like this. Okay, so as you see, as you can see, uh, if you approach zero from the left side, then the graph is going to just keep on increasing uh, without bounds. Uh, same for the right side. As you approach zero from the right side, the the y value just keeps blowing up, and so we say that the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x squared is equal to infinity. Uh, we can also say it, that it does not exist, but a better way uh, to write it uh, is to say that it is infinity. And this is a special case of limits called uh, infinite limits. Uh, we're not going to cover this um, until maybe a few sections uh, after this. But I wanted to introduce this example to, uh, to show you that uh, there are other ways in which limits cannot exist. So uh, the first way that we learned was that if a function approaches different values, like if you approach a value from the left side and you get y equals 4, for example, and then you approach it from the right side and you get the value y equals 6, then this means the limits do not agree, and you can say that the limit does not exist in this case. Another way in, in which the limit cannot exist is with this example. Uh, the, the function basically up, just blows up without bound. It, it does not approach a single value since infinity is not a number. Uh, so this is just an interesting example and that we'll revisit in, an, in another section.
To summarize this lesson, in example one, we discovered that the point may not exist, but the limit may have a value, in which case we say the limit exists. In example two, we demonstrated the use of the table values and the computation of the limit. Example three shows the case when the point may exist, uh, but the limit does not. And that's because um, that's because if you evaluate it from the left side and the right side, you get two different y values that it approaches, which if they're not equal to each other, then the limit does not exist. Um, the, next, the last example that we just worked talked about infinite limits, but uh, the overall idea is that the, both the point and the limit uh, do not exist. So in this case, you can have the point not existing, which in this case it did not exist because x cannot equal zero. So the point does not exist. It's a vertical asymptote. And the limit also does not exist. It just become, it just approaches infinity and blows up. So you can have all these variety of cases. And um, infinite limits will be discussed in another section. The next section is going to be um, talking about one-sided limits. Okay, that concludes this presentation. I hope you found this useful. I will see you in the next lesson.